welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is the BMW M3, the latest version, the G80 version and uh, this has just come out. I've been driving quite a few of the M3s recently. We've had the CSL in uh, previously and then I actually had that M2 uh, CS in as well. So I've been intrigued where they've gone with the new M3. It's always an event when a new M3 arrives. And this one, well, it sparked a bit of controversy, mainly because of the grill and the look of it, but that's right throughout the range. We'll come to that in a moment. But it does gain some useful numbers. Straight six twin turbo engine, 510 horsepower. That's up 60 horsepower on before metric horsepower. And it also goes to 650 Newton meters of torque, which is up 100 Newton meters as well. On the flip side, it's actually gained a bit of weight, like all of us in lockdown. It's gained 150 kilos over its previous generation, the F80. The other thing that's changed is the price of the car. In, here in the UK, we only get the competition version, the M3 competition and M4 competition. There is a, a lower non-competition version for some parts, the rest of the world, slightly lower horsepower. And that puts the price up. So we, in, here in the UK, 74,000 list, the car you see here with a few extras on it, £86,750. That's pretty serious territory. Previous M3s listed in the 50s, late 50,000 or thereabouts when it was last on sale in um, 2019. So a big uplift in price as well. And it's also grown over the previous generation. We are now 4.75 metres long. That's significant and it strikes me it's almost M5 size as we used to remember it and that's why I got the M3 in. I don't know why, I like the four-door saloon version and I've also got the Project 8. We're not going to do a twin test at all but I've just got it in comparison just as a Project 8 owner I'm really quite intrigued of how this car performs. Let's go and have a closer look. Now it's impossible to, not to discuss the new look of the M3 and this grill treatment BMW have put on the M3 and the M4. It is very distinctive. It does give it a very modern look. Weirdly, I've got sort of used to it over the few days I've had this car, but people do comment on it. And I suppose that's what you want to do. It does make all previous generations of M3 look sort of old fashioned. Um, there's no mistake in the look of this car. I get slightly upset when we sort of got these false sort of vents that isn't a vent, just a mould in there. But it's sort of so busy down here. We've got the radar thing down there. And I'll just put the, the P8 there because I'd like, I've always liked the sort of clean look of this car. There's no sort of missing it. You know it means business. There's very big grills. There's a distinctive splitter. Well, here there's, a, is there a splitter going on? Oh, there's a bit of carbon here. And then we're back to green here. It's, it's sort of, they can't stop, help themselves to sort of fiddle with bits. We'll go around the side as well. But um, yeah, <laughs> quite a look as this M3. If you want to come round here, we'll have a look at a bit more detail. These um, got the laser lights on this car. I have to say they're very good, the BMW laser lights. They're about a £1,500 option. Really crisp light and then they turn out um, in segments. So you're basically on main beam and then it, it sort of tones down as a car comes towards you. They work really well. Wheels on this one were 19 inch at the front. We've got the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S on this car. I believe Cup 2, the you know track day type tyre is an option as well. Red calipers, I think it's a no cost option to have red calipers. Distinctive design with a competition, so M3 competition. This is just where it, it, all the design sort of They've gone a bit nuts, haven't they, with the sort of the design of the car. Um, you've got the sill extensions as well, carbon mirrors, but the standard carbon roof as well. So that's on all M3 and M4 cars. It's sort of, yeah, it's a signature of um, M power, it seems at the moment. Rears, we actually go up to 20 inch wheels at the back, slightly wide. I can't quite remember what um, size they are, but I'll flat it up as a text. But you can see it's all odd here because they've, they've tried to, um, it's a sort of bigger wheel and they've tried to do it with the starling here and it's not very successful, I think. Then added this bit of um, plastic as well. If you look at the P8, it's much more successfully integrated into the door there. Come round, this has got um, a carbon pack on it. We'll look at the seats in a moment. But you've also got the carbon wing here, M3 competition. And just odd, why has it got an electric boot? You know, it's all going to be about lightweight, this car. Decent sized boot, no way of, there's no goo or uh, spare wheel or anything. There's a battery hiding down there. 
But I just find that a bit odd that they put electric boost on an M3. Enormous great exhaust, quad exhaust at the back. That's been a signature of M3 for a while. But I just want to show you the seats in this car because they're quite something. Now this is all part of the carbon pack and you can see the sort of pretty aggressive bucket seats. They do save apparently 10 kilos aside over the standard seats, but I'm going to get in. Um, you've got to be pretty careful how you get into this car because that is a serious bolster. And then there's a funny little bit of carbon in the middle, but why make them sort of electric adjustment if this car is all about lightweight and God, you have to wriggle your way out of them. And then we go back to the size of the car. That's me in, in the front. This is quite big. I can remember when sitting in the back of a 3 Series was a bit of a struggle. Not anymore. The only funny thing is you get, a, you get an armrest, but it actually opens into the boot. So the boot is then open if you flip down that bit. I'm going to pop the bonnet and have a look at the engine. It's funny, they don't have the catch anymore, so you're not struggling underneath. You just pull it twice on a BMW and open it comes. Right, there's the straight six in there. Sit a little bit further back than you remember when we had that M3 CSL in and a lot of structure. It's a shame that that carbon hoop is gone. Um, we now have this structural stiffness um, brought in by these bars here, but they're all a bit ugly and how they've done it sort of just bolt on rather than that beautiful carbon that we had on, well, M M2 CS had that carbon and the M3 previous used to have this bracing that was much prettier than that. But what a unit this is, as I say, twin turbo um, and power will go out on the road, but it goes revs to 7,200 RPM. Great engine, really strong. Right, let's take it out, see what it drives like. Now you very carefully have to get into the M3 if you've ticked the box for the carbon seats. I've got the crib sheet here, what do they term it? It's the um, M Carbon Pack. So 6,750 for carbon bucket seats and carbon exterior styling. Yeah, they are proper seats. There is an adjustment for bolstered. So if you've, if you've porked out over Christmas or something, you can adjust it and have a little easier time in the seats or you narrow it all up for when you do the track day, etc. BMW fare strikes you there is a bit of a button fest but this this is sort of modular this around the gear stick etc and the setup m mode auto h handbrake electric handbrake etc and the i drive that's in bmws all over what is different though of course in the m3 is the wheel and someone's been listening because this isn't as fat as some of the previous wheels it's still a big wheel i think it's helped by being lever rather than alcantara and then it's got these red m1 and m2 buttons that we'll get to in a moment big paddles as well big carbon paddles and there's a sort of rubber behind if you look behind there are different color they're nice as well and you still got column stalks things like that which is good I mean, it's beautifully trimmed in here, but then it is an expensive car, isn't it? Um, being a uh, four door, the seat belt is just there um, rather than a real reach back. Engine start is a bright red button down here. And I can't get over in on the dash. I can see a green BMW. I know from manufacturing to actually get the color of your car to appear on the dash. There's some very clever people when they log in. I don't know if you get a bespoke colour, it changes colour. But even the standard colours, that's, that's, I've not seen that before, where it's, it's actually your car that appears on dash. What else have we got? Well, we've got the usual things. You've got wireless charging and a couple of cup holders. I haven't actually looked in here. What have I got? I've got a little cubby hole and another charger in there. Yeah, electric assistance. It's that weird feeling of electric when you turn the wheel. Um, you've, this one has got comf no, what's it now? What do they call this technology pack, which has all the cameras and the parking sensors, etc. Um, it sets off. Oh, oh, there's so many modes. I could be here all day explaining all the modes for the gearbox for the um, traction control. But basically, it sets off in a fairly normal comfort mode. You set that all up through the screen, locks the car, and also, of course, it has a ZF automatic gearbox so there's no heroics moving off at the moment it feels vaguely normal but it doesn't feel quite so normal when we get out on some better roads Bit of a 
six cylinder Norwegian sound coming through. Nice sound, sort of slight, slightly laid back, sort of hollow bark there. Don't use a lot of throttle in this car because it's so chuffing quick. We're in the threes to 60 in this car. Um, speed limit is 155. It's that rich seam of torque, that twin turbo motor. Yes, it's 510 horsepower at the top end, but peak torque is at 2,700 RPM and all the way to 5, something 5.2. Five, and you know, 650 newton meters. That's getting on. Once, once you're approaching seven, that used to be supercar territory, and it's all thanks to having the turbos. But it does give it a sort of a, a different feel having the ZF torque converter gearbox in it rather than the um, dual clutch transmission that went before. I've never really been a fan for dual clutch transmissions in a sort of usable sort of car. Even the Bentley Conti GT, it sort of stumbles a bit and the um, yeah, Panamera did a bit as well. So if you're using this car in everyday use and you've got a bit of town work and you've got the usual dreary journeys to do, the torque converter gearbox is all right doing this sort of thing. So the first surprise, having lived with this M3 for a while, was it sort of has a, has a more friendly sort of character when you haven't got it all stoked up. It, it does feel very definitely everyday usable. But I ought to explain some of the parameters you have on this. If I go to home and I want to go to car and I can go to M menu, there's the green car again, and I can configure it in one. So this is what, this is these buttons on the wheel. So if I press this, this is what I get. Three options on every en you know, engine, transmission, chassis, steering, brake, and DSC. DSC, traction control, is another world. There's a whole depth of further menus for that. It's sort of a, a good thing and a bad thing. I initially thought it was going to be annoying because there was too many parameters but then you sort of do it once and then you can hit M1 or M2 and they're all your favourite settings and they're right there and you never really have to look at this again so that's quite clever engine in sport just makes the throttle a little bit more uh, reactive chassis comfort they're the dampers there's Sport and Sport Plus, they're for German roads. I think we'll stay with comfort for the UK setting, it should actually read. Steering Sport, Braking Sport. Now, I do have a grumble about the brakes. There should be just one setting for brakes. I have it, I find it idiotic that they've decided to have two settings. Who wants actually a soft, mushy pedal? I don't know anybody who does in a car like this. It should be just sport. I'm going to press M1 because I'm about to come out of Burford with my little squirt up the hill. I'm in normal drive, got nothing behind. Right, it's in fourth, in automatic, 30 miles an hour. Here we go. Oh, right, tracks came on a little bit there. Quite a lot of flashing of traction control just when all that torque hit. Utterly dry uh, tarmac and pretty high performance tyres that have warmed up. Uh, there's a proper go in this. You can spec the M3 with X drive, um, that's coming in the summer, so four wheel drive, which is almost on the cusp of being needed. Right, I'm turn down my favourite bit of road. There it does, there it is, change it down, it's in. Here's this bumpy section of road. It's alright really. Really quite impressive. And the surprise of the seats after you've had the shock of clambering into them and being bolted there. I've done a lot of miles in this car and it's all right actually, it's quite comfy, much better than M2 Club Sport. And the other nice thing I like on BMW, if you want to turn all the lane assistance off, one long press on this button in the set on the dash and it all goes off. 
weirdness with this car is the amount of tech it's got. Obviously radar cruise, etc. But then when you have it in uh, radar cruise, you actually have the same symbols you know from Tesla, etc. With seeing vehicles uh, beside you, if you're on a three-lane motorway or dual carriageway, it picks out as lorries, you're about to pass the lorry, it's, it's on the screen and you can take your hands off the steering wheel and it will steer for a little bit and then it will get a bit upset and start flashing little bits of yellow on the wheel here and then it will get really angry and tell you to turn, uh, get hold of the steering wheel again but it has a lot of tech that I just didn't expect to find on the M3. M2 confirm that means I'm in a different system. I'm in manual is how I've got M2 set. A more aggressive setup than I had in M1. Let's go through the dip, see what it thinks to that. Yeah, it's smothered that okay actually. shorter performance this feels quicker than the 500 horsepower it says on the label and with rear drive a friendly chassis nice steering you know it does absolutely hook on your all your monitoring is the rear axle and how much you grip you've got there but that's what I want an M3 to be right summarizing this car well it's nice to have come to it via M3 CSL and then that M2 CS. It feels a very different car to you though. So if I start with dislikes, I sort of wish it wasn't heavy. Yes, I've said you don't feel the weight, but you do realize, you know, 17, 25 kilos is heavy and it will only get heavier with a four wheel drive, etc. Second, price. This is an 86,000 pound car. Had, I, had someone tick the option for carbon brakes, well, it would have been 95. So you're knocking on the door of a hundred thousand pound. Sorry, through my bed set. If this had been an M4 and this spec and car brakes, it is a hundred thousand pound car. That feels mighty chunky for a, what I used to remember as an M3, and you're in with the 911 and those sort of cars. Um, other dislike. Well, I have a a love-hate relationship with the seat. I think they're just too aggressive at the, the bottom bolsters. Mighty impressive seat. And then I sit in it for a while and I'm actually pretty comfy, but they are extreme seats. Choose with care if that's really what you want. Another thing you could say isn't quite right on it is something about the gearbox. Use or normal thing, it's not obviously as sharp as a dual clutch transmission. I think the only undoing with it is when you're driving quite aggressively and you're doing the downshifts, they're not quite as sharp as they used to be with a dual clutch transmission. The ping ping in, they sort of slightly slur the gear change. Brakes, this has got steel brakes on it and they feel pretty strong to me. Carbon, you know, I'm a massive fan of carbon brakes but I don't feel short change with this car at all. See, I like the way it's changed down there but... for this and not touching anything I'm just in drive it's down to second gear it's a very clever system in the third there coming out of here in third doesn't annoy me now quite so much because it feels such a different M3 than when before. It does feel a model all on its own and a mighty impressive one at that. I like the modern tech. I've got everything 
I could need in here and I like the way I can adjust everything I've just gone to M1 to do the roundup because it then goes back to drive and I've got comfort dampers I really like the way I yes I've got all those choices but I only really need to look at them once yes. it's got gesture control so me waving around in front of there has just turned the, the radio on including this car it's it's a very good M3. It's a different M3. You've, if you're an old fart like me, it doesn't feel like the uh, M3s of old that are more position and lighter. But it does feel like a very sprightly, very quick, agile M5. And it's almost as they've changed places. It's a bit like the 911 has sort of grown into a different car with the 992 generation. It's sort of what's happened with this M3. But it's okay, just like it's okay with 911s, because now we're getting Cayman 4-litre GTSs and things, but we've got the M2 CS. That didn't exist when the E46 M3 was around, but it does today, so this can allows the M3 to become back to this very usable four-door car with a serious dynamic edge, but this usability as well. So I think we, we've got a win-win as enthusiasts. Talking to the guys at BMW, I said, are you going to have to limit the numbers? Because this is, you know, 230 grams per kilometre and everybody gets very upset about these things. So, no, not at all. We're doing so well with the sales of the hybrid BMWs, like the X5 we had, that are 30, 40 grams. So our average CO2 figure, as a fleet average, is not a problem. We can sell as many as we want of these M3s. So... It's a bit like, again, KN and allowing the 911 to live on and do the GT3s. Think about BMW and all those very successful hybrid cars. That allows this M3 to develop with a proper engine, straight six, twin turbo, loads of performance. So again, we win-win, and it also means they can develop this. And I hear whispers there's going to be a CSL version, and there's going to be a touring version, so an estate version. So expect, I think, some great things for this M3. I really enjoyed my time with it, and much more so when I initially saw the pictures and saw the spec sheet of it, and I thought, oh dear, this is not going to be very good. No, not so. After several days with it, I've really enjoyed it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video as well. And if you have, well, please keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.